This week, for the last episode of this podcast before the Jewish New Year of Rosh Hashanah, let's dive into the news that on Tuesday, September 15th, Israel officially normalized relations with two Muslim countries in the Middle East, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain. There's a lot of buzz, so let's sort out the major takeaways. I'm Lev Gringaus, and welcome to The Jews Are Tired, your podcast about Jewish news. First of all, let's get to one of the big reasons why normalized relations between Israel and the UAE and Bahrain are a big deal and why you should care. This is what we get in place of Israel annexing part of the West Bank. This is something I covered on the podcast for July 9th, if you want to go and check that out. But to recap, as part of President Trump's deal of the century for peace between Israel and the Palestinians, released in January, Israel got the green light from the United States to officially annex up to 30% of the West Bank. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu decided to run with that green light and laid out this general plan that after July 1st, Israel would start the annexation process. So for much of the spring and summer alongside everything else going on, annexation was hanging in the air. For left-wing and liberal American Jews and Israelis, it was seen as a terrible idea that would reduce the chance of a viable future Palestinian state. For right-wing American Jews and Israelis, it was seen as another victory of Israeli power and a statement of Jewish legitimacy in the West Bank. For Palestinians, annexation was seen as another case of Israel and the United States toying around, denying Palestinian agency and self-determination, and taking what they wanted without a word from the Palestinians. Now, July 1st came and went, and nothing really happened with annexation, though the idea was still floating around until the United Arab Emirates stepped in. On August 13th, President Trump confirmed that the United Arab Emirates had agreed to sign a peace treaty with Israel in exchange for Israel dropping annexation. A few weeks later, on September 11th, Bahrain was also confirmed to be joining this whole party and normalizing relations with Israel. So on Tuesday, September 15th, at the White House, Israel Israel, the UAE, and Bahrain signed a general declaration of peace called the Abraham Accords. Israel and Bahrain signed a declaration of peace, and Israel and the UAE signed a peace treaty. Now, for a moment, let's zoom out, set the annexation angle aside, and get at another reason why this is a big deal. And that starts with understanding what, quote, normalizing relations with Israel is all about. For most of its history, Israel has been an isolated country. As a thought exercise, imagine that, let's say, the rest of the United States and Canada refused to acknowledge the existence of Minnesota other than trying to invade it every few years. That's kind of the picture here. And there is a deep bitterness in Israel about that isolation and that lack of recognition, particularly in the Middle East. In many of the wars Israel fought, it fought against its neighbors like Egypt, Syria, and Jordan. Even now, there are countries, many of them in the Middle East, that will not accept an Israeli passport and who officially refuse to acknowledge Israel's existence. And to be clear, a lot of that, when you look into the rhetoric, is about anti-Semitism and not wanting to respect a Jewish sovereign state in the Middle East. So any instance when an Arab or Muslim country decides to publicly say, yes, Israel is a real country, let's open up real relations and stop cutting you off just because you're the Jewish state, that's a big deal. It's another step forward in facing the reality that Israel is a part of the Middle East, and for Israelis, getting that recognition is getting respect, which is, again, really important to a country used to being ostracized. So these open relations with the UAE and Bahrain makes a total of four, just four, Middle Eastern countries Israel has signed treaties with, including Egypt in 1979 and Jordan in 1994. So again, to make that crystal clear, this is a big diplomatic victory for Israel and for the Trump administration for pulling this together. But having said that, there are still some details we should understand to keep these treaties in appropriate context. Coming back to annexation, it sounds really nice that the United Arab Emirates swooped in to help defuse Israeli annexation of the West Bank by saying, okay, let's do a peace deal instead because we know that's something you want. That makes it look like the UAE stepped in to protect the Palestinians from annexation and makes them somewhat of a hero. 
But motivations are more than a bit murky here. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, despite promising annexation, had actually done very little to make that promise a reality, and in years past has promised annexation without doing anything about it as well. So a lot of journalists and analysts were waiting for the backpedal, even though this time annexation did seem much more likely to happen because the Trump administration seemed to be giving a green light for it. So the speculation goes that Netanyahu wanted a way out, some way to avoid annexation but still have a big victory to show the Israeli public. And the Trump administration, despite giving the green light for annexation, didn't actually want it to happen yet, but also wanted some big Middle East peace-related victory to show for all their work. And the United Arab Emirates, looking to improve their public image after being involved in horrible conflicts like those in Yemen and Libya, plus have a good reason to get the United States to sell them more military weapons, decided to close this gap. Peace with Israel means no annexation, means everybody gets a nice, shiny diplomatic victory. Signing treaties is also somewhat of a publicity stunt. The UAE and Bahrain already had pretty close relations with Israel. They just weren't really public and official, and they didn't have commercial flights for Israelis. But the UAE and Bahrain are regional rivals with Iran, which, funny enough, is a regional enemy of Israel. So the enemy of my enemy is my friend is the principle that has been at play for a while. And really, Israel's down-low relations with many Middle Eastern countries is pretty much one of the worst-kept secrets of global politics. So a convenient political victory for everyone is, well, convenient. And not that much necessarily changes. It's also been noted that it's kind of funny that Israel is signing peace treaties with the UAE and Bahrain when Israel has never been actually at war with those specific countries. And look, I know I keep coming back to annexation, but what's going on with that is pretty murky too. Originally, the UAE and Israel peace deal was said to be in exchange for this pause in annexation. Netanyahu, on the other hand, said publicly that there was no pause in annexation. But when Jared Kushner, President Trump's son-in-law and the primary advisor on a lot of Middle East policy, was asked how long this pause or this temporary suspension of Israeli annexation would be, he said, quote, somewhere between a short time and a long time, that's what temporary means, end quote. So annexation might still happen, but nothing is really clear. And really, this is all kind of a, a good example of how politics in the Middle East works. There might be a big show, but at least, in my opinion, there is often shockingly little substance to actually say, oh, this is what this does, and not just, hey, this is an important show because of the characters involved. But substance can also be a matter of perspective. For Palestinian leadership, these peace deals do a lot, but not necessarily in the way you think. Is it good that annexation isn't happening for them? Sure. But the UAE and Bahrain have publicly broken one of the key narratives of the Middle East for the past 70 years, which is that any peace between Muslim countries and Israel is impossible without peace between Israel and the Palestinians. This narrative has dominated peace initiatives in the Middle East with this obsessive idea, particularly in the West, that, you know, if you solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, then that fixes everything else in the Middle East. And I'll just say bluntly that when you look at history, that's actually never been the case. But in the narrative of things, that's how it went. That's why Arab countries, if they had any relations with Israel, they never went public with it. Because that would undermine their supposed support of the Palestinians. And this was a way to pressure Israel also into making peace in exchange for regional recognition and respect. And this gave the Palestinian cause legitimacy. But now that pressure is all but gone. Many Arab countries aren't pretending to put the Palestinians first anymore. They aren't pretending that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is relevant to them and instead are normalizing relations with Israel. And that leaves the Palestinian leadership all the more isolated, without leverage or options to push Israel to make peace or advance their own narrative and cause. Which leaves the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in the same deadlock it's been in for years. So hopefully that shines a light on how to understand these peace deals and helps explain some of the convoluted workings 
of world politics. Now, as a final thought unrelated to peace deals, the Jewish New Year Rosh Hashanah is happening this Friday. I don't really know what to say because the past year has been a hell of a lot to deal with, but wishing everyone a sweet new year nonetheless in the hopes that this time it will be a sweeter new year. And this also roughly marks one year of the existence of this podcast. So thank you all, whoever and wherever you are listening to this podcast, for tuning in, and I hope it has been of good use to you and will continue to be a way to slow down, take a breath, and process the news that makes the Jews tired. This has been this week's The Jews Are Tired podcast. I'm Lev Gringaus. Don't forget to subscribe and share, and hopefully next week, the Jews will get some rest. The Jews Are Tired is a product of Jewfolk, Inc. For more information, go to tcjewfolk.com or email the show at podcast at tcjewfolk.com.